Greetings! This video is titled Black Filmmaker Fights for the Heritage Asset for Orange Mountain, a Black Community in Memphis. My name is Anthony L. Elmore. I made not only the first karate kickboxing film in American film history, I made history in that I made the first independent feature film in Memphis film history. The film I made was a 35 millimeter film called The Contemporary Gladiator that I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in in 1988. You see, in 1909, the Motion Picture Parents Company, the MPVC, set the 35 millimeter film as the worldwide standard to project films in any theater in the world and also SELFTY. Now that's the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. They also named the 35 millimeter film as the worldwide standard for film exhibition and movie theaters. In short, I am Memphis' first independent feature filmmaker. Now, this is what you must understand about Memphis, Tennessee. While Dr. Martin Luther King died in Memphis fighting against injustice, we have to look no further than a few months ago, whereas five Memphis police officers were charged with killing Tyree Nichols. This is black on black racism. You see? Now, in 1988, Spike Lee did a movie called School Days where he tackled the issue of black on black racism. You see, again, this video is titled Black Filmmaker Fights for the Heritage, Heritage Asset for Historic Orange Mountain, a black community in Memphis. Now, in order to understand the significance of our story, you have to go back to Memphis in 1987, whereas only two feature films were associated with Memphis. In 1929, MGM shot some scenes here for the black musical Hallelujah. In 1984, Canon Films shot the movie Making the Grade at Rogues College. However, in 1987, it was us and Orange Round who was the first to shoot an independent 35 millimeter film. Unknown and untold, we and Orange Round make Memphis film history. Let me explain the meaning of heritage asset. You see, a heritage asset is an item that has value because of its contribution to a nation's society, knowledge, in or culture. You see, in 1988, I did not just produce a movie, I produced a movement. You see, as a black man in Memphis, Tennessee, I was born in Jim Crow America, whereas when we would go down to the Marco Theater downtown, we had to enter the side entrance because by law, we could not enter the front door with a sit up in the balcony in Jim Crow America, which was very legal. Now, I became the first independent filmmaker in Memphis film history to be able to write, produce, direct, and star in a film, in an independent feature film, that actually played at the Marigold Theater in Memphis. In fact, I said, for a black man who could not walk in the front door of Marigold, I sat with the owner of the Marigold Theater, Mr. Steve Lightman, and we screened my film for exhibition. You see, this is what I later learned what happened to me in Memphis. You see, Lynn Sittler, she's the Memphis Sherry County Film Commission and she used her office to obscure the fact that it was a black man who made Memphis' first independent feature film. What Lynn Sittler did was, even though I was her first client in 1987, she never at one time visited our film set, never wrote a story about us, and 
even when we had our movie premiere, Lynn Sittler did not attend the premiere. And there was a planned strategy to make our movie a failure because from 36 years, from 1987 to the day, they have never wrote a positive story and they have never acknowledged us as Memphis first and the future, and the future future filmmaker, you see? Now, you see, this is what happened in Memphis. I faced a culture, a pattern of practice of white supremacy and black on black racism, you see? We had little or no media coverage and we were not covered, you see? Now, you see, the saving grace, the saving grace for us, even though we got no coverage in Memphis from Lynn Sittler and her job was to obscure the fact that we, as a black person, was making Memphis first independent feature filmmaker, it was the LA Times on November 22nd, 1987, where they did a story the contemporary gladiator of films made, you know. Now, they were the one that did a story. It says, Anthony Elmore stars, direct, and produce a comedy drama about his ascent to the pinnacle of the kickboxing world. You see, what I want you to share my experience in Memphis. You see, I, as a black filmmaker, produced the first 35 millimeter independent feature film. I was shot, shut out, discriminated, and out of the Memphis white world of film history. Now, my film played in East Africa in the country of Kenya, where I was treated with a hero's weapon in Kenya. My film played in Kenya, Germany, Asia, and all around the world. But here in Memphis, Tennessee, I am unknown and it's untold that I am Memphis first independent feature film You see, what Lynn Sittler did, Lynn Sittler showed her white supremacy, racism, and, and she got other people to support black on black racism, you see. However, in my particular case, I met the president of Kenya, the late Daniel A. Ralph Moore, who named me an African ambassador. In fact, in 2009, when Barack Obama, you see, when Barack Obama got elected president, you see, our Memphis mayor, this is in December of 2008, my friend, Dr. Willie Harrington, was the first elected black mayor of Memphis in 1992. When 1998, 2008, we were at a Christmas party at my friend's attorney, Charles Carpenter's place, and I met with Memphis Mayor Willie Harrington, and I told the mayor, I said, listen, Mayor, now that I have, we got a new president, Barack Obama has just got elected, I said, I have a better chance than getting support from my new president in Washington than you as mayor. Because you see, our black mayor in Memphis, Dr. W.W. W. Harrington, hated Africa. I went to Africa, Kenya in 1992. I received the hero's welcome, and I was trying to put together education culture, history, family relationships, to do a trade, to do business in Africa, but I, even our black mayor hated Africa. In fact, what the mayor told me was, he said, you got your boy Steve Cohen. That's Congressman Cohen is our white congressman who represents, you know, he's the only congressman in a majority black district, the only white congressman in a majority black district, and he's our congressman. And Steve Cohen supported me. In fact, in 2009, after President Obama got into office and got inaugurated in office, he went to Ghana in July of 2009. And Congressman Cohen, knowing that I went to Ghana in my relationship with Africa, he got on the floor of Congress and he mentioned my name on the floor of Congress. I want you to, first of all, listen to Congressman Cohen talk about me in the country uh, about me and my Mr. Speaker, today I rise to applaud the efforts of Ghana to promote good governance and civic participation. President Obama will wrap up the third leg of his international trip in Ghana. He'll be there today, and I'm reminded of the important role this democratic nation plays in the international world. Ghana is an active participant in the United Nations and the African Union. 
and its region has been extremely active in international peacekeeping. Ghana, the first state in sub-Saharan Africa to gain its independence, has shown that it's a stable nation whose government and people are accountable to one another. These acts are a good first step in developing future relationships between our nation and Ghana. One of my constituents, five-time karate and kickboxing champion Anthony Amp Elmore, fulfilled his lifelong dream by visiting Ghana in 1998. The champ visited Accra and its changed life. After returning to Memphis, Amp developed his vision of educating and enlightening people about the cultural and economic importance of Africa as a continent, as well as Ghana. At his home and throughout the city, he showcased African artifacts, fabrics, and art. This weekend, on Friday and Saturday both, he'll be honoring Africa at his home and inviting the public and having a fashion show and an African dinner. I'll be there. Next week, next year, I'll visit Ghana and hope to develop trade between our city, Ghana, and our nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In regards to Memphis Film History, I am the father of independent feature filmmaking in Memphis in that I was the first independent feature filmmaker whose movie made it to movie theaters. We made the sympathy of the standard of the society of motion picture television engineer standards. See, let me give you an example of who I, Anthony M. Elmore is. The difference in me, the words are, you can talk about it during breakfast. You see, in breakfast, you got a, the, the story of being involved. You see, the chicken is involved, but the pig was committed. See, the pig was committed, but the chicken was involved. And in my life in film, I was involved in filmmaking in that I did not just create a movie, but I created a movement in that we use film as a way to make a difference in our community. You see, this is what happened on June, on Thursday, January 23rd, 2020, Lynn Sittler wrote an email to Tracy So and covered the email to me. And this is what she said. She says, research shows that he is not the city's first independent feature filmmaker. As some of his communications have stated, Morris Penza takes that title. In 1982, he released I Was a Zombie for the FBI, which he directed. Now, this is how a film is released. And this is how it's defined. A, a movie released or premiere is when a completed movie is released for public use to see. In 1988, the contemporary gladiator is Memphis' first independent feature film and because it premiered in movie theaters in Memphis and around the world. Now, let me get back to involvement and commitment. You see, the chicken was involved, but the pig was committed in regards to the black movement and my black community of Orange Mountain. I am committed in fighting for our community's heritage assets. See, heritage assets are assets with historic, artistic, scientific, technological, geophysical, and environmental qualities that are held and maintained principally for their contributions to knowledge and culture. And this purpose is centered to the objectives of entity holding them. You see, this is a heritage asset. You see, I not only bring to Orange Mound, I bring a heritage asset to Black America USA because I created right here in Orange Mound in the Black community of Memphis, I created the first kickboxing film in American film history in that little black kids can know that the first kickboxing film made in American history is a black man and a black community with black instructors. In other words, we are included in the American dream because we made a movie to tell our story. And we told our story even before any white person ever told a story about filmmaking or kickboxing in the world. You see, this is what you must understand. You see, we refer to you to January 2023 email where Lynn Settler noted that in 1982, a student family non-released out of the zone for the FBI. 
Now, on June 14, 2023, the new African American Executive Director of In the Memphis, Ms. Kamir Fryer, wrote me and she said, quote, it was a summary for the FBI 1982 was an independent feature completed before yours, even if it did not have distribution. See, this is what you must understand about Camille Fryer's statement. The culture and practice for In the Memphis is to categorize our 35 millimeter film in a culture of obscurity. You see, obscurity means the state of being unknown, inconspicuous, or unimportant. You see, a film is not just a film in the 1980s. Producing a 16 millimeter film that played only on night flight, a cable show, and our 1988 Memphis release 35 millimeter film, The Contemporary Gladiator, our Memphis first independent feature film was shown in Memphis theaters and features in theaters around the world, whereas these white filmmakers only had a film that never released anywhere, never showed anywhere other than on a cable show once. Now, Camille Fire further wrote, and her and her art director, Miriam Bell wrote, she said, Miriam said we were not comfortable making that claim and marketing and clarified that In Memphis is not a film historian organization. She said, you are clearly a pioneering Memphis filmmaker, and we were honored uh, to highlight that fact. Now, one of the sins of American history and culture is to obscure black history. Our fight is to make sure that our Orange Mound historical asset stops con being continued to be obscured. Now, it is unknown and untold in Memphis history that the first independent 35 millimeter theatrical distributed film was made by a black man living right here in this house in Orange Mountain. The first kickboxing film an American film history was made here. It was made in Orange Mound. It's about somebody in Orange Mound. It tells the story about Orange Mound. For example, if someone were to go to an indie film festival, they would have no relationship to the fact, to the historical fact, that the first independent 35 millimeter theatrical film release happened right here in Orange Mound in Memphis, Tennessee. You see, our 1988 film, The Contemporary Gladiator, is black history and it is also a historical asset. We want our historical asset taken out of skirty. Orange Mountain is the birthplace of Memphis' first independent 35mm theatrical distributed film and the birthplace of the first kickboxing film and American history. Our film is not just black history, but our film is American history. And we are fighting to protect our historical asset. You see, right here, the man that's the karate master is a real man, the late Julius Dorsey. We in this film are karate people that practice karate, we did karate, and it is so exciting to know, and it's good for young children to know, that the first kickboxing film is made right here in Orange Mountain, and the first kickboxing film in American history is American history, and it is a black film and a black filmmaker. We are excited to tell the story that the only known karate a kickboxing biopic of a world champion is our film, the 1988 film release called The Contemporary Gladiator.